The Supercar Challenge is powered by Pirelli. Autosportinsurance.com Syntex Innovative Lubricants Magla, create your own digital magazine and Valero, FIA approved race and rally base layers. Welcome to the Supercar Challenge powered by Pirelli. After a long winter break, this GT Interior Car Championship is set for its 16th consecutive season and the circuit of Zolder in Belgium is where they set up for the opening round. And things are different from previous years. This season, each round will have a 60-minute and a 90-minute race, so half an hour longer than before. And the GT and touring car fields will be mingled into one enormous grid. And this will provide a whole host of new challenges for everyone, because the differentials in speed will be enormous. We'll start out looking at the fastest classes, Super GT and GTB. In Super GT, this Ligier LMP3 car has pole for both races, driven by the brothers Indy and Milan Doncha. Milan made his debut in GT racing last year with a Davy Tech Chevrolet Corvette. He just missed out on the GTB title, but had a very good season. And this year he makes his Super GT debut with this aerodynamically sophisticated prototype. Ligier is unquestionably the fastest car in the field, but you have to know how to get the full potential out of it. And there's the rub. A GT demands a certain driving style that really suits me, says Milan. This is more like a single seater though, and that's all new to me. Last year I learned how to drive in a Corvette, so I need to kind of put that to one side and start all over again. It's going to be all about learning this season, trying to find the limit, and especially here at Zolder, that'll be hard. David Tech Engineering are also running Henry Tumbrink in his Volvo S60 V8. Last year he set a new record for most wins in a season but still missed out on the title. So what are his goals and expectations for 2016? We'll be aiming for the title again, he says, but we've been doing that for the last few years anyway. We've been very close each time. Last year, I even set a new record for more wins in the season than anyone, but still didn't take the title. That was quite a disappointment. It's all little mistakes and technical problems, and we've got to iron those out. Two brand new entries from Spain are Spanish Mosler GT3s run by E2P Racing. Both cars are driven by Pro-Am combinations, a gentleman driver and a pro. In number 153, Oliver Campos Hull is joined by Greek Costa Canaroglu. In the 154 Mosler, Spaniard Alberto Martin and pro driver Ben Klukas, and they take third place in qualifying just behind Henry Zumbrink. The black and lime green Ginetta LMP3 of Luxembourg's Jean Pierre Leguer is also a pro am combination. He teams up with last year's Super Lights Challenge champion Sam de Jonge, and they set fourth fastest time in qualifying. Also new to Super GT is Henk Tace. He's driving what's called a Pumax RT, an evolution of the Vicora V8, again featuring a big V8 engine. And at 71 years old, the veteran has lost none of his enthusiasm. It's been my first time in Super GT with this Pumax. Things are looking very promising in free practice. I could see that I could keep up a good pace. I'm definitely not using the full potential of the car yet. I'm a little worried that I'm going to crash it. But all things considered, I think we've got a strong package and very happy so far with the way things are going. Bob Herber returns to Super GT with this Mercedes SLS GT3. This has been on his bucket list for a while, he says, but that's not the case for JR Motorsport, a thoroughly BMW team that is now running the car. How's Bob managed to pull off that little miracle? These BMW guys aren't as dumb as they look, he says. They finally made the right choice. I'm doing the 24-hour series with the JR Motorsport BMW. They're sharp, they're friendly, they're competitive. I've wanted the Mercedes to be run by a bigger team, so it takes a lot of people to get the car going properly. Despite everybody being very sarcastic about my chances of getting a Mercedes into a BMW team, we only had a short chat with the boss and it was settled in a few minutes. I'm still getting used to the car, so are the team. But let's take a look at the highlights of Saturday's first race, a one-hour encounter. The Pumax fifth place on the grid. We're on board with Hank Tace. Indy Doncha on pole position, being challenged on the run down to the first corner by Ben Klukas' Mosler from row three of the grid. A little bit of a lock-up from the Mosler, and it's the Ligier that has the advantage. Henry Tumbrink with the Volvo, squirrely over the kerbs. 
on board with Sundbrink and you can see there is Ben Klukas in the Mosler he's not got the grip he needs on the outside Sundbrink uses his knowledge to put the Volvo back up into second place there's the leader right in front of us Ben Klukas ex Formula 3 ace is also very quick Henk Tace lost a place at the start to Oliver Campos Hull in the Mosler so little change up in the top half dozen Indy Doncha leading in the Ligier LMP3, but Sunbrink full of confidence in the Volvo. Downforce versus engine power. Both cars are V8s, 5-litre Nissan versus 7-litre Corvette. And this battle continues all race long. After the pit stops, Milan Doncha exerts the dominance of the Ligier and they race away to victory. He and brother Indy taking the first win of the season from Henry Tumbring's Volvo in second with Oliver Campos Hull and Costa Canaroglu on the podium with the Mosa on the debut for the Spanish team. In the GTB class, Belgium's Vard Slice returns with the JR Motorsport BMW M4 silhouette, but he's not alone this season, joined by Monegas co-driver Chris Matthews. My background's endurance racing. I had to adjust to the sprint format of the Supercar Challenge last year. But with Chris, who's also got a lot of endurance experience, I think we make a really good team. We may not be the fastest on track, but in the long run, I think we'll do really well in the championship. It's a completely new experience for me, says Chris, and at my age I think it's always good to do something new. Uh, got high hopes, I've always been told this is a really friendly championship, great paddock atmosphere, and I wanted to find out for myself. The car, I have to say, is amazing, I'm looking forward to a great season. The Porsche GT3 has always been a force to be reckoned with in GTB. This is Belgian driver Jos Janssen bringing in his GT3 Cup 997. Team Race Art have entered two Porsches from the latest generation here at Zolder. Newcomer Hans Fabry competes in 318. The other car driven by two-time Super GT champion Roger Graals. And for him, the 991 GT3 is an entirely new experience. My Porsche experience is very limited, says Roger. I've only driven one or two guest races in the last couple of years. I always thought it was fun to drive a Porsche, but my biggest love is still the Viper and the Corvette. A good friend of mine, though, he wanted to race in a Porsche Cup, so I decided I'd join him for this season, see how it goes. And we're eager to find out how competitive we can be in the GTB class. It's going to be very interesting. It's a voyage into the unknown for Hans Fabry as well. He's saying it's not an easy car to drive. I take a while to get the feeling, I think, for it. I've only done five test sessions. This will be my second race, so I'm still learning. Don't have great expectations. We'll just take it easy, see how it goes, and hope to do well next year. So I think today's race is definitely going to be much more like a long test session than anything else. Chris Matthews and Vard Slice started on pole position for the first of our GTB class races. Roger Graus alongside Jos Janssen and Hans Fabry, ahead of Art Bossman, also in a Porsche. Graus starting a row behind Chris Matthews. They had the inside line for Air Salinxer to take the lead and held it up to the mandatory pit stops. No result seconds in this first race of the season, so all down to individual driver skills. And then it all came down to the final lap with Vard Slice hounding Roger Graus who'd used up all his tyres. But out of the Jackie X chicane, Slice didn't have the power or the traction to attack and Graus managed to hold on for victory in the Porsche by two tenths of a second. Vard Slice and Chris Matthews taking second and Hans Fabry in third position on his debut. It's sunny but cold on Sunday morning for the 90-minute Race 2 Enduro, a field of over 30 cars, a few that didn't make Sunday after mechanical problems in Race 1. And we're expecting more teams coming into the season as well. Super GT cars, of course, the fastest. Indy Donches, Ligier on pole from Henry Jumbring's Volvo. Then Ben Klukas in the Moser alongside him. Sam de Jonge in that green and black Ginetta, Henk Tace. And we're with Oliver Campos Hull in the Mosler MT900R. Bob Herbert's Mercedes lines up seventh. So the drag race down to the first corner. Indy Doncha in the Ligier. 
Will he out accelerate the torque of the Moser of Henry Zumbrink? Zumbrink with a very good start on the left of the picture. Moser's coming down the inside, so is Henk Tace sweeping around the first corner. Everybody trying to avoid contact, but somebody's facing backwards, and that is Henry Zumbrink. So the Volvo in trouble nearly took the lead, but he rejoins last. Looks like the car is okay, though. He's trying to find out. Let's take a look. On board with Henry, gets a run on the Ligier down into the first corner. Ligier didn't really give him enough racing room, but he managed to keep it out of the gravel, and fortunately, nobody clattered him. The outside line is always a tough place to be, and that's where Oliver Campos Hull was. Started in sixth position, Henk Tace alongside. Ginetta in front, that's Sam de Jonger in fourth. You can see the other Ginetta on the inside. Whoa! Big slide there. And Henk Tace moved up nicely. Oliver Campos Hull up to fourth. Henk Tace up to third place. And they all managed to avoid the spinning Volvo. Ben Klukas in second in the other Mosler. And there is Klukas with Henk Tace behind him. Black car Indy Doncha leading the race in the Ligier JSP3. And there is the Ginetta ramping over the curb. Sam de Jonga with Bob Herber using the huge V8 muscle of the Mercedes SLS. Diving down the inside, grabbing fifth spot as they jump the curbs. Don't forget, everybody's tyres cold. It's bright and sunny, but the temperatures are very low, almost single digits. And that means it's going to be very skiddy for the first couple of laps, especially for the high downforce cars. The Ginetta we just saw past and the Ligier out front. Going to take a few laps to get heat properly into those tyres without tyre warmers pre-race. Ben Klukas second, Henk Tace third. There's Oliver Campos Hull in fourth. Now up to fifth, Bob Herber, Sam De Jonge in sixth in the Ginetta. But as his tyre temperatures come in, De Jonge counter-attacks, retaking sixth place from Herber. Going a long way around the outside. And Herber has no answer to that downforce. Lots more racing still to come in this 90-minute enduro here at Zolda. Stay with us. The Supercar Challenge is powered by Pirelli, Autosportinsurance.com, Syntex Innovative Lubricants, Magla, create your own digital magazine, and Valero, FIA approved race and rally base layers. Welcome back to the Supercar Challenge powered by Pirelli, continuing with the second race of the opening race weekend at Zolda. Title favourite Henry Tumbrick got it wrong on the first corner, trying to pressure the Ligier that sat on pole, spinning out and down to the tail of the field. Race leader Indy Doncha in the David Tech run Ligier LMP3 car. And he and brother Milan won the opening race ahead of the Volvo. A little further back, fourth place, the Mosler of Oliver Campos Hull, the Spaniard with Greek Costa Conoroglu was on the outside the front row of the grid, pressuring 71-year-old veteran Henk Tace for third. And Tace in what looks like a Viper at the back and an Aston Martin at the front. It's a Pumax RT, big V8 engine car, Chevy Corvette V8 in the Mosler and close quarters racing between the two of them. A comfortable lead for the race on winning Ligier LMP3 came to an end after 15 laps. Indy Doncha in for frantic work from the team, this unplanned stop. Doing really well so far, we've improved the setup a great deal, says Indy. It's really a test weekend for us, we didn't know what to expect, but we're very happy that we've made really good progress with the car's setup, and the lap times definitely show that we're heading in the right direction. There's a lot more potential still in the car, but coming out of the chicane, I heard a loud noise on the right hand side. At first, I thought my ear pug had dropped out, but it turns out the exhaust broke, and that's not so much of an issue on its own, but because the heat in there, it, it overheated the gearbox, it wouldn't shift up, wouldn't shift down, so I came in, they tried to fix it, went out again, got to say the guys did a great job, but not too long after that the exhaust snapped again, which is a shame, because we were really going well. Ligier returns to the race, but doesn't finish with 75% of race distance, and that leaves the Spanish Mosler of Ben Klukas and Alberto Di Martina in the lead team manager Javier Morcio having a great package this season. Henk Tace in the Puxmac with the other Mosler behind. 
Oliver Campos Hull and Costa Canaroglu finishing in third place in the opening race, the one hour enduro on Saturday. Sam de Jonge fourth in the Ginetta LMP3 ahead of Bob Herbert's Mercedes and the recovering Henry Zumbrink getting up to sixth position in Super GT, trying to close in on the back of this battle. On board with Henk Tace, the 71-year-old veteran converting to this Puxmas from the open radicals he's been driving for the last few years. On board with Oliver Campos Hull, dives to the inside and in he goes, grabbing second position. And the Ginetta on the inside, up to third goes Sam de Jonge. Tace had been the third fastest car in Super GT, but smoke coming from the back of the car explains that he's got a bit of an issue. And after 35 minutes, having to park the car in the pit lane midway through the race. It's a bit spiteful, Shame. We had a bearing in the diff, uh, came loose, broke, and the temperature started to rise. I knew if I kept going, I'd just destroy the diff, and uh, we still wouldn't finish the race. So better to come in now, call it a day, limit the damage. Very simple to fix for the next round, but so happy with the results we've shown this weekend. The car's really competitive. I'm looking forward to having a great season. We'll prepare the car again for Oschersleben, take a few German lessons, and we'll be 100% ready for the next one. Ben Klukas leading in the Mosler in traffic in the sport at super sport classes. Sam de Jonge up to second in the Ginetta. Oliver Campos hold third in the other Spanish Mosler. And the recovering Henry Zumbrick in fourth place. Car number 103, the Volvo S60 V8 ahead of Bob Herber's Mercedes. Well, Zumbrick looking for third position. Faster on the straights. Campos hold managing to try and hang on up to the mandatory pit stops there between the 45th and 55th minute of the 90 minute enduro. In the end, Tumbrink goes through. And Oliver Campos Hull continues to fight with him tooth and nail before he hands over to his Greek teammate Costa Kanaroglu. And the Mosler started in sixth position, kept its nose clean as high as third, comes in in fourth right behind Zumbrink. Not a bad start to the season for these guys who are on the podium third place in the 60 minute first race. Yeah, we are, we are very happy with uh, the weekend itself. Uh, we have been uh, developing the car for this new Pirelli set of tires and changing with the setup from the previous uh, year. And we are surprised about the, the difficulty of this championship, how challenging it is, all the fight and, and uh, quick drivers that we can find here. They head back out into the fray, Costa Canaroglu behind the wheel of the Mosler, looking to finish on the podium once more, perhaps. Henry Zumbrink battling now with Jean-Pierre Lecoeur in the Ginetta, the Belgian driver, with Sam de Jong and his pro teammate starting. And that leaves Henry Zumbink driving on his own as ever in the Volvo with the upper hand fully up to speed with the car. And the Ginetta, of course, not designed for these Pirelli tyres either. You can see that the Belgian driver struggling a little bit. He had the lead because they had no result seconds. Zumbink had 10, but that wasn't enough to keep him behind. Closes in on the leader and takes the lead. That was lap 37, and at lap 55, Henry Zumbrink takes the chequered flag, still in the lead, having gone from stone last in the first corner to victory in race two. I was trying to stay in front of Indy Doncha. I brake really late, but with the rain in race one, I set the brake balance too much to the rear, couldn't hold it. Bang, the rear wheels locked up, I spun. Had a tough job slicing through the field from last, but it made for a great fun race. Great overtaking, some really great highlights, fantastic race. Genetti drivers Sam de Jonge and Jean-Pierre Lecoeur join him on the podium along with Oliver Campos Hull and Costa Conoroglu again third. With victory in the second place, Zumbrink leads the standings. The Spaniards close behind with Milan and Indy Doncha still in fourth courtesy of pole and the fastest lap when they won on Saturday. GTB class pole sitter Roger Graus won race one and took an extra point for pole. Running down towards Ayrs de Linkster, Challenged by Jos Janssen in the blue Cup 997. 
And Graz loses first place, avoiding Henry Zumbrink's spinning Volvo, almost ending up in the gravel traps himself. And that means Jos Janssen leads in the GTB class. He's up to seventh place overall in his Porsche. Roger Graz in second place and Art Bossman in third. He also made a good start in his Porsche. Graz recovers from his disappointing start and by lap two he is already reeling in leader Jos Janssen. Despite being much more a fan of Corvettes and Vipers, looks like Graz is adapting well to the Porsche and he retakes the lead on lap two. Janssen having traction problems and he drops back to fourth place. And that allows Art Bossman to move up into second with Chris Matthews starting the BMW M4 silhouette up in third. Seven laps in and the BMW is really into its stride. Vard Slice will drive it later, but Matthews determined to reel in Art Bossman. Bossman converting to the Porsche from Lotus. Matthews, like Vard Slice, an experienced endurance racer, so these 90 minute encounters are no major dramas for them. The BMW silhouette well sorted now, and he grabs second place at the first turn. After the pit stops, Vard Slice starts to close in on Roger Graus, but then has to park the car on the pit straight. Not when Graus in my vizier kreeg, and Joost said, "It's going to be lucky." I had Graus in sight. Joost, the team manager, said over the radio, with the time left, we had a good chance of winning, and the engine suddenly cut coming out of Bianchi. Uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit more luck next time out in Oschersleben. We're already ready for the battle though, we're competitive. I really hope to get into a good fight with Roger Graus, but it was not to be. Well, good for him. We'll be back next time though. With not much between them, the BMW being out of the way allowed Roger Graus to race unconcerned towards his second victory of the weekend. Jos Janssen recovered from his handling problems. The Porsche moved up to second thanks to the result seconds. Art Bossman took third and hung on against the attacks of Hans Fabry for the final quarter of an hour to finish on the podium. Roger Graus delighted with win number two, joined on the podium then by Jos Janssen and Art Bossman. A Porsche 1-2-3. Amazing weekend, says Graz. Great debut for the new car. Way beyond my expectations. I'm really, really happy. The BMW had completed 75% of race distance, so Vard Slice and Chris Matthews got fifth position points, and they lie second in the standings behind double winner Roger Graz. Well, looks like the change from big front engine monsters to the rear engine Porsche has been a success for Graz. Stay with us, lots more to come from the Supercar Challenge and the Super Lights Challenge. We'll take a look next at the Supersport and Sport Divisions and the Nimble Sports Cars in Group 1 and Group 2 here in Zolder. The Supercar Challenge is powered by Pirelli, Autosportinsurance.com, Syntex Innovative Lubricants, Magla, Create Your Own Digital Magazine, and Valero FIA approved race and rally base layers.